Hello and welcome to another video. This is the return of the Tecmoan 15. These are 15 mini discs that were really broken that Tecmoan said he would send to me because he was going to throw them away anyway. He doesn't have any more and he doesn't send any more out so don't bother asking him. I've already fixed a few of these um, and today I quite fancied the challenge of trying to fix another one. So what I've done is I've selected two to fix and I've already attempted to fix this one and I can't fix it and in fact I made it worse because I broke something on it. So what I'm going to do is uh, clear the desk again and we'll have a go at fixing this one. Unfortunately you'll have to excuse the building noise that's going on locally. Um, this is the Panasonic SJ MJ78 and uh, I'd had a, look, had a look at it before and the problem was it seemed to not be able to get a good um, read of the disc. So it sometimes showed the TOC, the table of contents, but was never able to actually play a disc. So that was um, a while back now. I'm going to put links in the uh, description box to the original Tecmoan 15 video and the subsequent videos I've done where I've attempted to fix some of those players. So I've got a fully charged um, gumstick battery. What I found about the Panasonics is they need a lot of charge, they need a lot of power. So if you're fixing any of these yourself, make sure you've um, got a fully charged battery before you start. So this player works with this remote off of one of my other players, which will really help us in the um, identifying the problem and fixing it. So it says play. Even though that battery is fully charged, oh sorry, there we go. It only shows one, one bar. So let's plug my headphones in. Now I can hear it bleeping. Oh, it's found the track titles, but there's no sound. So I wonder if we can, oh, and it's stuck. So it's having trouble reading the track. So it can read the track titles, but it can't play. So let's see if we can skip forward to um, disc two. Sorry, track two. Again, I'm not getting any sound out of that at all. So eventually I think it's going to say that it can't. It's, oh, I can hear it. Oh, but it's skipping. I can hear it, but it's skipping. Let me see if I can get um, a blue um, external speaker and get my demo disc. Right, I've got my external speaker. Unfortunately, it hums when it's plugged into charge. But I've got my demo disc now, so you can hear what's going on a bit better. Also, the disc door gets stuck. The disc gets stuck in there. Not too worried about that. Let's see if we can get it working properly first. Okay, so you can hear the bleeps. So clearly something not right with it. Let's press play. Let's turn it down. That must be the volume on here, I guess. Now the power, the battery meter there is going up and down. And as I said, these Panasonic, Panasonics need a lot of juice in the battery to work. But what I suspect is happening, let me let you listen with the mic right up to the player. Turn the speaker off for a minute. Some sort of noise it's making. I'll skip forwards. Not that I'm, you can't read. You can't even read the um, table of contents now. I think. Now let's listen again.
So that sound is the motor trying to spin up. So watch what happens to the battery indicator as the motor tries to spin up. So what I think that is, is I think the um, it's not the motor, it might be the laser sled moving across and then banging or skipping on the gear. So let me see if I can show you that. Looking right inside here, there's the spin. Let's find something to point with. This is the spindle that the disc spins on. That's spinning fine, although it maybe could do with some lubrication. This here is the laser lens. That at the back is a worm gear, which the laser sled travels backwards and forwards on. And at the front, just under there, so if I can focus a bit better on there, this, this metal bit here runs on a guide, which you can just see there, or maybe not now. There we go, it runs on a guide there. And what I suspect is happening is these all need lubricating. And because they're quite stiff, the uh, laser can't move into the right position. So I've had success with that on one or two other players. So that's what we're going to try and fix today. We're going to take the lid off. Can we do it without taking the lid off? Let's try and do it without taking the lid off. See if we get any success on that. Because um, it's quite fiddly to get these screws undone and all of this gubbins here out of the way. But we'll try it without um, taking the lid off. And then we'll try it with taking the lid off. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get some of my favourites at IPA. I'm going to spray it into the lid. It's a pump action one, this one, which is handy because if you knock it over, it doesn't matter, it's not going to spill. And I have seen another quite famous YouTuber knock over his IPA all over his desk. Um, so leave a comment if you know who it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just using a fairly clean toothbrush. Let's focus in again. And it's too big this toothbrush really, but let's see if we can do it anyway. I'm just going to get in there and try and clean. Oh, that's too big. So I can't can't use a toothbrush because I can't get the, the bristles on the worm gear because they're too long. So let's put that somewhere safe where it won't destroy anything. And instead what I'm going to do is I'll have to use a cotton bud. Now I'm getting less keen on using cotton buds because they do tend to shed the cotton and leave them on the inside of your machine. But let's see what we can do. So I'm just going to try and clean up, clean anything that's sticky or old um, lubrication off of there. I've got a little bit of dirt off of it. And also, not that it's easy to see, and it's hard for me as well because I can't see, I can either look at the screen of the phone I'm using or um, in which case I can't see very well, or you can look at the, uh, or I can look at the player itself and you won't be able to see the player because it goes out of shot. So I'm just trying to clean up that uh, guide that the sled runs on. Now I don't know of a better way of doing this, but the only way I can see to move this is with my metal, um, oh, you've got to be really careful with that. I was knocking the, um, it's too dark. Let me get some light on the subject. Now this light's not a lot of good because it doesn't really help you, but it helps me. But if next to the laser itself, that whole sled is supported by two tiny little wires. And if you break those wires, as I did on a different disc, mini disc player, then the player won't work again full stop. So what I'm trying to do is push that sled over. I might do it with my finger instead. There we go. So I've just pushed it to one side. Now I can get in there and push it the other one. Now I'm going to find my Q-tip, my cotton bud again. I'm going to have a spray. I'll try the other part of the 
worm gear. Now, oh, it's behind that cable there. So the problem is with, um, let's turn that light out, see if we can get better focus. Here we go. Now the problem is doing it this way, I'm only really cleaning one side of the worm gear, the bit I can get to. But it might be enough. Let's have a look again. Can't really see anything on that one, can we? Bit of dust maybe. And let's try and get in just on that little sled there, where that is actually quite a good shot. So that metal bit just there runs along a plastic guide. Okay, right. I really must get myself some decent battery powered lighting. So it's not so easy to see because the ribbon cable is in the way. But I'm now going to try and get some lubrication. In fact, what I'm going to do is move the sled back over again. And I'm going to put a little bit of lubrication on this worm gear here. So what happens is there's a motor in, there's a gear in there somewhere. You can't really see it. And it spins this worm gear and then the sled travels back and forth on the worm gear. So what I did on the last one that I fixed like this is I used some white lithium grease on the worm gear and I used a little bit of um, hair clipper oil on this um, this guide here that this metal bit runs, uh, runs along. So let me get that sorted out. I've actually got myself some um, cocktail sticks, that was the word I was looking for. Um, and when I was trying to fix the player earlier on, these were better than my plastic toothpicks I was using. So I'm going to get a little bit of this white lithium grease. I'm going to put a little bit on the end of there. You don't, re you really want not very much at all. There we go, that should do. So you see how big that is. Teeny. Let's get the camera focused again if I can. If I hold that still, that might help. So there we go. And we're just going to get in there. And just rub that grease. Let's see if we can get focused a bit closer. So it keeps going out of focus. Sorry about that. Let's go in the side here. I'm just going to put that grease on there. Oh, I'm so sorry, you're out of focus. So that little bit of grease there, hopefully if I can get this sled moving a little bit, it will just lubricate the whole sled um, or, or, and the whole worm gear there. And what else I'm going to do is going to get rid of that um, cocktail stick. Now I'm going to get my, I'm going to get something to do this on. I'm going to get my hair clipper. Um, that's a bit tissue there. And I'll get my hair clipper grease, which is greasy all over me now. Hang on. So let's set up my player. Can't really see. Right, we'll do that in a minute. Going to get another cocktail stick. Get a bit of lubrication on there. Probably more than I need. That should be fine though. Put that out of the way. Now let's see if I can get this on camera as well. So what we're looking at is brace myself here. There we go. So you can see there the metal sled runs on this guide. You can't really see the guide, but it's like an L shape. So I'm just going to try and get some of this grease onto there just to give a little bit of um, lubrication on there. I should have put maybe a little bit more on. There's a bit on, on there still. 
Let's give it another go. I don't want too much, but I want to make sure it's done properly. Actually, I'll tell you what else I can do. Here we go. Need three hands for this, really. So we've got a bit on there now. Can you see that little dab on there? I'm going to put it on that there, which I can't really show you. Actually, first thing I'm going to do, see the spindle there? I'm going to get a little bit just in the centre of the spindle if I can. There we go. So that will lubricate the gear for the spindle. And then with what's left on the uh, on the stick, I'm going to try and get it back on that guide rail now. It's hard to do in two dimensions looking at a phone screen. Oops. I just hope by capillary action that's getting down onto that guide. Okay, so let's get rid of that cocktail stick. Give this a bit of a spin. Make sure I've got the excess off. Okay, so let's move the sled over because I want to demonstrate. The sled is now over to the right hand side as we look at it. in if I can. Let's zoom out a little bit. There we go. This mechanism, I think the spring, the hold that ejects the disc is not working properly. I think it's there. I'm not too worried about that because you can't get them out. Right, let's close that up. Grab our remote and it's trying to do the track read already and I'm covering grease. I'll let you listen to it, see if it's any better. Doesn't sound right, does it? Okay, that doesn't sound right. Let's have a look and see if that laser sled has moved. Good. There we go. So yeah, the laser sled is now in the centre. Now I've never known a mini disc player where cleaning the lens made any difference. But since we're in here anyway, let's get a fresh cotton bud. Tiny little bit of IPA. that lens a bit of a clean gently get a little bit of a dry one up Let's see if it makes any difference it might just need to dry out a little bit to be honest Still got the problem with the battery, um, the battery meter going down and up. I can still hear it it's trying to seek, I think. Yeah, that sounds to me like it's still not able to find the track. It sounds like it's sounds like the sled is moving all the way to one side and then jumping on the gear. So it doesn't know when it gets to the end. It's jumping on the gear. Let's give up on that for a second. So 
sorry about the weird volume levels here. I'm using my lavalier mic so I can put put it up right against your uh, against the mini displayer so you can hear what's going on. So let's try a little bit more lubrication on there because we couldn't really get in there, could we? Hmm. Yeah, let's give it some more lubricant. It might be stuck. Well, let me zoom in it and load. God, terrible video quality with this amount of light on this amount of zoom. You can see the gear there quite well. You could a minute ago. Doesn't appear to be anything blocking it. Let me have a look off camera. See in there, which I can't see on the phone screen I'm using to shoot this video, but I can see with my eye, and you might be able to see if you're looking at a, a larger screen than I am. But in there is a, let's see if I can get it in focus, a piece of hair. So I'm going to try and get it out. No idea whether this is staying in shot. Probably out of shot now, sorry about that. There we go, bit of hair. Dread to think where that came from. So let's have a look, see if we can see anything else. Right, I've got some more um, grease, a little bit of grit, lithium grease. Oh, I can't see. Looking at the phone screen, I can only see it in two dimensions. In one, di oh, two dimensions. And I need three dimensions to find out how far I'm going. So let me see if I, I can see what was happening there. You couldn't. So let me see if I can show you. There's a little blob of grease right on that gear now. I'm going to try and move it around a little bit. It's probably too much. That's more than I would normally put on there. Right, so without a disc in there, let's see if we can get it moving around. No disc, well, it knew that already. Nice, it parks the head at the other end. Let's manually move it. Actually, let's not mess around, let's get the disc in there, see what happens. Give you a listen with the mic. Yeah, it still sounds to me like it can't, it's not seeking. Yeah, it still sounds to me like it's not seeking properly. I'm not finding when it's seeking. So I'm going to try another fully charged battery just in case it needs a bit more power. And I wonder, have I got a battery adapter? Oh, I might have a battery adapter I could put on there as well. So, fully charged battery. Put the other one back on charge. Is this, is this the right one? Yeah, that one's up. There's a brand new battery in this as well. Brand new Amazon Basics one. Right, let's see what happens. Let's turn this light off. 
Nie. Let you have a listen again. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get anywhere with this one. So I'm going to break for a minute and see if I can figure out anything obvious uh, off camera. OK, so I'm going to take the top off of this. I've undone screws there, there, there and there. I'm going to try and leave the top off. I dug that open. That makes more sense. It's pushing on those two. Right, so it's holding this on. It's off. Okay, so let's have a good look inside this. This lid has come off. This, um, there's not much to it. Just a little piece of, I guess it's aluminium. Um, and on a lot of these players, there's like a, another piece of metal there. Um, but now we've got it off, we can have a good look inside this and uh, show you a few things I've learned in the last few years, let's so move the sled slightly. <clears throat> right, so those two bits of wire there, one there and one there, I guess are connected to this electromagnet. Feels like there's a little magnet there. And they have something to do with the way the lens moves. Can you see that? Now I was cleaning the lens on one of these, that's all sticky there. I was cleaning the lens on one of these with a Q-tip once and I managed to break one of these and the plan never worked again, obviously, because the lens couldn't focus properly. But, and this is really difficult for me to see because my phone is like five and a half inch screen or something like that, maybe six inches. So I can either show you or I can look round the phone myself and it's quite hard to see. So um, if I look really up close, then I can see a lot more um, than I can see now. And if I played this video back on a large monitor in 1080p, then I'd be able to see even more than that. So what I can see, looking around the phone, is we've got some tiny little bits of hair. Let's just see if I can focus in on that. I'm gonna go a digital zoom, two times a digital zoom try and hold the thing still so there's tiny little bits of hair around this wire but if i damage this wire the thing's never going to work so i'm just trying to try and carefully pluck those out much but it might help if they're not in there and this this little bit of um cable here looks like it is a little bit buckled now it's quite possible someone else has been in here before me i don't think it was techno and either i or someone else have got some um, lubrication on this bit here but I'm not too worried about that Tiny little bits of hair coming out of there. <laughs> Tried to blow on it without spitting on it. So it's really hard for me to see and let you see at the same time. Terrible when your eyes get old. Okay, so let's um, look at this sled again. This metal part here runs on this plastic sled. 
see there there's a there's bits of hair under there as well so let's try and get those out forgive me if, fo if it goes out of focus while I'm doing this so more hair it's quite dusty actually right I'll tell you what I have got there we go this is the brush from the uh, hair clipper set Let's give that a go in there. Oh, it was quite a stiff brush actually. Yes, I know I should be using an anti-static brush, but hell. Quite a bit of dust coming off of that. And this brush might come in useful now because I'm going to move that laser sled over again. This is the worm gear it runs on. Now, if that is sticky, then it's not going to it's not going to move properly. That's just the grease up on there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it another clean up all the way along with the brush and isopropyl alcohol, probably a bit much of that. Oh, there's plenty. Oh, yeah, wicks up the uh, wicks up the brush as well. So it might be a bit too much, let's so wick a bit off. And I'm going to thoroughly clean that worm gear now. And again, I'm only cleaning the top bit because I can't get to the bit underneath. It's better to have half of it clean than none. do the same on this sled here and I quite like this brush I got a bit too much grease on the spindle as well so get rid of that So just in case I did get some grease on the uh, lens, look at that, there's, can you see that, there we go, bits of dust on there. Just in case I've got too much grease on the lens I'm going to get a fresh um, cotton bud from somewhere. I did have several. Oh, there we go. I'm going to clean the lens really gently, coming from the side. You can, hopefully, you can see that. See it moving? The whole laser assembly is moving. This is why I don't like cleaning lenses. You could, I suppose, scratch them, but cotton buds have got loads of fibres on them, and you're cleaning a lens, which you, and a lens arrangement that you don't really want any hair on. Just realised this video is sideways, so I'm gonna have to turn that round afterwards. Right, so let's. I think we've given it long enough to dry. So let's give it a bit more lubrication, a bit of fresh lubrication. Probably more than I need. Mm -hmm. Get a good angle that we can all see. You don't really want to put too much on there, I think. You don't really want too much on there. as you play it it will it will drag itself along anyway and then let's just wipe that bit off and I'm going to use my very greasy hair clipper tube again I 
and there's probably more than I need so I'm going to run it up the stick and it will stick to the stick and then I'll get a smaller dab to come down onto the rail there some of it was stuck on the cocktail stick oh that's more than I wanted as well but I'm not a microsurgeon so let's gently move that up and down like that and I think that'll be alright probably a bit more than I need so I'm going to use another stick just to get a little bit off Okay. Well, I wonder if this will play. I'm really nervous. I take the battery out. Now, if this is a recorder, the laser is capable of um, raising the surface of the disc in record mode up to several hundred degrees centigrade to allow it to be magnetically written. But this is just a player, so it's a low power laser, but it still scares the living daylights out of me. This is a good, good way to look at these. Um, so yeah, so don't do this with the battery in, okay? Otherwise, I mean, you might you might not even know you've damaged your eyes until days later. So there's a little catch just inside here somewhere. There maybe, there maybe, which catches on the side of the disc in there and pulls the disc door open. There we go. So that's it there, I think. Let's see if we can see it from the other side. Oh, you can't really see it. Maybe you can. No, you can't really see it. And it's, <laughs> it's a bit skew with as well. There we go. So I'll hold, hold that shut. Oh, let's take that disc. Got marks all over it. It's probably where it's got dirty and something inside it scraped it. That's interesting. Okay, so let's put a battery in it. Doesn't appear to do anything. There might be some sort of safety device showing that the lid is closed. The uh, lid is open or off. Oh, there we go. Look at that disc spinning. That looks fantastic, doesn't it? Well, it appears to be playing. Let's turn my mic, let's turn my speakers on. Oh, oh I can't do it. Here we go. Is it playing? Oh, I think I lifted the door open. So let's see what we can get here. Okay, it's found the 17 tracks on the demo disc. 13 minutes of music. Oh, look at that. Skip tracks. And now let's go down in volume. I'm going to turn this light off. Maybe you can see a bit better with the light off. Oh, I think I just because the lid isn't on. It's um. There we go. Can you see that? Oh, tell you what. Hang on a second. There we go. That's the way to do it. I think. So it's found seventeen tracks. Let's play. And what I'm going to do is skip up and down the tracks because the the sled. The sled moves from the inside out on the on the disc, and by moving throughout the 
surface of the disc, although it's only 13 minutes, we should be moving the um, grease along a bit further. So what I'll probably do is play a longer disc in this later on, which is full up, and then the, the lubrication will travel all the way along that worm gear, give it a good lubrication. End of the seat, that's the end of the disc. Now, let me find another disc that's full up. Oh, before I do that, while you're listening to that, I'll reach for along a disc that's actually full. Now, what we'll probably get in a minute, the disc will stop spinning. There we go. So, this is how these mini disc players play for so long it spins the disc up as it starts the track and then recall uh, moves more data into the buffer so it moves um, it buffers the track so it spins the disc and then reads ahead into a buffer and then plays from the buffer so the disc isn't spinning all the time and then when it needs more data say for a different track or if it's a long track like this one it's just started again so it's 50 seconds it read into the buffer and it's playing that now and then it gets to the end of the buffer and reads in another batch of data and then spin, the disc is allowed to spin down and that's how they uh, run for so many hours on just essentially the power of a AA battery in fact it's 1.2 this, this um, gumstick battery is 1.2 volts and about how many milliamps is it 1450 milliamps tops and they'll run for maybe 16 hours something like that on that battery Hope the sound's coming out right on this. <laughs> All right, let's put a, a longer disc in. Okay, so I'll put a disc in. It's still a 74 minute disc, but this one has is almost full up. So one of my playlists was spread over standard play discs, uh, SP discs, over two discs to get the whole playlist in. So this one runs for the entire length of this disc. And I've turned the speaker off because uh, it's got the music on it is copyrighted, so I don't want you listening to it. Or I don't want YouTube um, giving me a copyright strike. So all I'm going to do is move all the way up to the end of the disc. And as I'm doing that, that sled is moving from the inside to the outside. And that will distribute that grease all the way up that worm gear. There we go, so we've got to the end. We'll just wind it all the way back again now. Actually, let's make sure it's working at the end. Can't play the track for you, obviously. But if it's working, you'll see the, um, the time counter going once the track um, title is, list is finished, which is quite long, sorry about that. So the disc has spun down now because it's read all the data it needs to for the next 50 seconds or so. There we go. So we're 24 seconds in. Now the disc spins up because I've gone back a couple of, a couple of tracks. We should go all the way back to the beginning. Here we go, so we're back to the beginning of the disc. So uh, I'll give this a test. I'm pretty sure this is gonna work now. I'm gonna put it back together and just do another test to make sure it is working. But I think we'll call that a fix. Now that is one I'd given up on before because uh, I didn't know to lubricate these, these areas here. So um, it's very fiddly work, but the thing is it was, it was going in the bin. Techman was gonna throw it away anyway. Uh, and that's why he, he threw it in my direction, basically. 
uh, and I've already had an attempt to try and fix this probably just by cleaning the laser and diagnosing and seeing if I could figure out what the problem was. I thought the laser might be dead but I think a lot of the time when it can't read I think it's just that there's there's a lot of um, there's some stickiness on these uh, worm gear and the, and the sled guide there and with some careful cleaning and a bit of time and patience and a bit of kit then um, some of these mini discs can be brought back to life and this one I think if I can reach it yes yeah, an MDLP player as well so that's handy so and it works on one of my remotes already one I've got for another player so this is this is a good a good fix for me that's another one another Panasonic and I've got a soft spot for Panasonic's another Panasonic saved from electronics recycling or landfill so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put links to the uh, screwdriver kit and um, you know the IPA and stuff in the description box there are affiliate links so if you purchase from my um, my links then I get a very very small commission on the purchase I don't know who's bought it or anything um, but you pay the same price and I get a very small commission so you can get the kit you need from the links in the description box so thanks very much for watching and uh, please comment if you've got anything useful to add and I'll see you in the next video thanks a lot